Alright, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Dragonite and welcome back to Harvest December. So, oh, it looks like we're all together. Hmm, that was all everyone, that was all everyone said the day Shira returned. It was welcoming in a way that they didn't need to make a big deal out of it. And they accepted her easily as if it was the most natural thing to do. Hmm, you better hurry up and fix this. Only Yuki said something that might hurt her, of course. Leave it to me. What you need... We need you to behave like a god once in a while. And then we all got down to business. We looked at the data Mayoi had sent that informed us how many gods were causing trouble in what part of town. And decided who would go where to take care of it. Hmm. Yuki frowned. This... What's this about? Kohai frowned as well and gradually we all did too. He connected his cell phone to the web. He opened the map application Mayoi had made which was supposed to be used in conjunction with the data she sent. There, on the map. There's nothing here. Not a trace. Huh. At first, we thought it was an earthquake. Impossible, Sine said dazedly with a look of horror. Reality is, say it with me. My words died on my lips. This can't be. Kohai's arms dropped to his sides. On the screen of the cell phone in his hand, tiny red dots were gathering and heading directly towards us. That's a pretty picture. That looks like a pseudo Udo in the background. The tall thing. Anyway, they are too numerous. Only Yuki was keeping cool. A large stampede of gods was charging our way. Whoa, what should we do? Mizuho asked. Nobody answered. Nobody could. We were all frozen in terror. Up till now, we had the upper hand, but now the tables had turned. The weapons in our hands were useless against the stampede running towards us. Maybe we could take down a few of the front line. But then, soon as the ones... But then, soon the ones behind would trample us down. Run! Shiro yelled. We snapped out of it. Shiro's right. We have to run. Yuki reacted quickly and ran after her. Sane! Kohai and Sane ran too. My stomach clenched. It was a combination of the ground shaking and my fear. It was similar to being seasick. Oh no. Only Mizuho was late to react. She was frozen on the spot. Mizuho! I ran back to her. Well, what am I supposed to do? She stuttered. I stepped in front of her to shield her. There was no time to escape. I couldn't use the chopstick gun, so I clutched on the wooden sword instead. There were some gods several feet tall amongst the stampede. I didn't have a choice but to fight them now. Twisting the dial on the sword, I started the transmitter up. The ruins on the surface wavered and immediately began to rearrange themselves. My OA's technology had advanced so far that the runes changed instantaneously. Only a couple meters left. The situation was hopeless. Nasaki! I heard Yuki scream, but it was too late. I stepped forward and swung my sword. Ow! A few on the front line fell backwards. The ones behind trampled on those that fell and kept coming. I swung my sword. A god flew backwards. I swung. A god flew. Swung. God. This is it. I wouldn't make it. My vision shook vertically. Nasaki! Who is that that called my name? Was it Yuki or Shiro? I was thinking about that before I registered the pain. My vision steadied. I must be dead. No. I was in the air. Soon I would hit the ground. Then I would be trampled to death. Stop! Ugh. I landed hard. No one stepped on me yet. What had happened to Mizuho? What had happened to Mizuho? I knew that it was a hopeless case, but I wanted her to be alive. I had just sacrificed my own to protect her after all. I couldn't speak. I wanted to yell run or help, but I couldn't. Uh, I could still feel the earthquake. No, it was my head throbbing. I looked up at the shadow upon me. No, I croaked. She looked so small, so hopeless. Shira was standing before me, her arms spread wide, facing the stampede alone. Remember who I am? Her voice rang miles throughout town. Her command was worthy of her title as god who had ruled the land for centuries. The stampede slowed and stopped. The sudden silence was nauseating. Huh? Mizuho looked confused. Her mind was still blank. She was unable to register what was happening. To think you have to crawl and struggle like the mortals. How you have fallen. The owner of the voice stepped out of the crowd. He may have been smaller than many of them, but his power was beyond compare. It was the wolf. His mouth twisted into a cruel smile. His golden eyes were shimmering brightly. They were wild, out of control. But they still retained a warped intelligence. 
It was the wolf that had been teaching the others all along. From what I see of your actions, you've turned into a mere animal. Have you gotten mad? And I thought your intelligence couldn't have dropped any further. I'm just enjoying my new freedom as a god. I don't see any reason why I shouldn't. Saliva dripped from between his fangs. It melted the snow and opened a hole in the asphalt beneath it. <clears throat> Eating, laughing, moving without any restriction can be liberating. And you find joy in that, do you? Not really. But maybe I'd find joy in biting off your head. It would be worth a try. You fall and become something so pathetically close to a human, it's pathetic, pathetic, pathetic. Your existence has no meaning anyway. Perhaps I have learned to think like a human, but I don't find it a bad thing. Don't start with the preaching. You above all people. I doubt I am capable of loving. Do you doubt I am capable of loving? You. I am. Shiro closed her eyes. The wolf didn't hesitate. Everything looked, everything looked slowed down. Shiro pushing her... Shiro pushing her down and clawing at her face. And that sound, that tearing sound, red, everywhere, tainting the snow. The girl I had in my arms, she was being torn apart. Shiro! The wolf howled, her body shook in trauma. She didn't make a sound. I wanted to hear her scream. At least I would know she was still alive. Stop! I stretched out my arm towards her. The wolf stepped off her stomach, pinning her to the ground. Stepped on her stomach, pinning her to the ground, in fact. Stop! I screamed. But he didn't listen. He just ripped into her. Shiro! I screamed. Everyone else was left speechless. Shiro was ecstatic. He reveled in the feeling of having a god under his claws at the mercy of his fangs. He howled in victory. He lifted his head, exposing his sharp teeth. No! I heard Mizuho gasp in the distance. Shiro intended to eat her. Shiro, our god, was going to be eaten. Stop! What wasn't there would be. Is that Madoi? A small figure solidified next to Mizuho. I, Madoi, god of Sakakima, command you all, return to your places. Stop this. His eyes shimmered gold, the way Shiro's did. Mizuho dropped to her knees, the way anyone would in the presence of a god. The wolf was fast to react. He jumped off Shiro away from Madoi. Who are you? Has your arrogance turned you blind? You gave your powers to Shiro. You should be powerless. Only Tagami's powers were lost. Unable to be contained, the powers of Sakashima have returned to me. And now that Tagami's powers are free, I have the freedom to rule as well. I doubt you have the authority to do so. Scum. Madoi's expression contorted into one of contempt. Shiro leapt forward to strike him. Purge. Surrender. Shiro's body slammed down onto the asphalt. The smell of rotting meat permeated the air. A faint, high-pitched whistle. It was Shiro whimpering in pain. The wolf, that is. What's alive shall die. It was the power of a... It was the power of the god of turning. Leaving his torso at his end head, it... All four of Shiro's legs had rotted blood. Ew! Obey me. You... You... I'll take your life next. Madoi reached down towards the wolf with his tiny hand. Shiro immediately pressed his snout on the ground. Madui ignored the wolf's gesture and placed his hand on Shiro's head. You'll kill me even when I have surrendered. Turn. Shiro's eyes rolled to the back of his head. His body went lax. Blood slid... Ew. Each time he switched, a mouthful of blood was purged. Ew. That was Shiro's blood. Hear me, gods of Tagami. Madui turned back, facing the other gods that surrounded us. I, the god of Sakashima, claim this land. Those who oppose this, step forward. Madoi stared them down. One by one, they knelt before him. If you will obey me, return to where you belong. If you choose to continue this nonsense, I shall turn you as I have done as I have turned to Shiro. It is now my responsibility to keep peace in this land. They kept silent, lending their ears to the voice of Sakashima. Return! Madoi turned his palm downwards. The gods sank and dissolved into the ground. They had returned to the land. We were all left breathless. We stared at the tiny boy who had just saved us all. Madoi? What? What? Mizuho Nene Sama, Madoi was so scared. Madoi was so scared. And he's returned to normal. Maybe he had turned himself from the gods into a child. Madoi clung on to Mizuho and began to bawl his eyes out. Whoa, whoa, it's over. You don't need to cry. Why is that a question? Because I feel like crying too. <clears throat> we were all emotionally strained after the string of events we had gone through. Madoi's reaction re represented all of ours. What had happened? 
I touched my face in the daze. My fingers grazed the dried blood of my skin. Shiro! I was moving before I knew it. Everything was so red. Everything was torn. I am glad... And yet, the broken girl smiled at me. You called my name. Misaki, are you alright? Don't remind me. It's not about me. Oh, don't mind me. Remind. Mind. I gathered her in my arms and cried for help. Somebody. Anybody. Epilogue. Alright, I'm gonna end this off here. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. My name is Dragonite. And in the next part, we're gonna be finishing this up. I will see you all later.